All right, guys. Well, uh, we're going to be getting started in less than two minutes. Um, just like to kind of do a quick little intro here at Cyber University. This is the May Cyber Expo. We've got three great speakers, including myself at one. But we've got Norman Hallett and Tom Busby coming up. Norman's going to be coming up first. Uh, this is something that we do um, every Every month uh, we do a Cyber Expo. We get some some of the greatest masterminds of trading to kind of give you their feedback. And everything is more or less totally different as in the education goes because you have somebody's going to talk about stock trading, which will be me. You have Norman's going to talk a little about discipline. You have a friend Tom Busby there. He's going to talk a little bit, a lot about, you know, regarding about futures and options. So, but you're going to kind of get to understand that when it comes to trading, you all need to know a little bit about everything. Um, because as much as you want to go out there and you want to learn how to trade the market, um, I know some people have a favor and like, ah, oh, you know, like it doesn't fit in my schedule or I like this because I spent all this money to learn this and I don't want to make that one work. You know, I got to make this one work or I'm just, you know, I just want to hear, or I'm just a professional freebie taker and say, hey, let me take all these free lessons from everybody and they'll tell me their secrets and let me go out there and try to do it on my own. And, you know, we all know how that ends up. So listen, there's a lot out there that you guys have to understand that when it comes to trading, um, I know everybody wants to trade doesn't mean you should okay and that is the issue when it comes to trading everybody goes out there they try to trade they get themselves in trouble and don't understand that there's a psychology part of it there's a discipline part of it there's also a strategy behind it um you know but you'll notice that a lot of us trade roughly about 70 percent of the markets they all trade about the same okay the only what makes 30 percent different it's just a different market you know, but um, but I was just on uh, I was just on a, a you know on event with timing research with Norman Hallett actually uh, on Monday, and you know the conversation did come up you know regarding about discipline and psychology. I know Norman's going to talk a little bit about that. Where you know everybody doesn't know how to lose money. You know I have an old saying, and it seems like it's getting more popular by the day. But um, losing money is actually a very good thing. And the reason why it's a good thing, because if you know why you lost, you're not going to do it again. It's like it's like a divorce. You know, you know, we marry for love first, you know, and, but then we didn't realize like, wow, this is great. And next thing we find out that I got to spend the next 50 years with this person after going two, three years in a marriage. And, you know, divorce is very, very expensive, you know. Um, so if, if you knew that from the beginning, you might have probably took it a little bit more seriously before you actually you made it and listen i love marriage been married for over 20 years i got three wonderful sons uh, i'm very fortunate to to marry a great a great woman but um but for some of us we know that you know we get married for the wrong reasons and trading is exactly the same you go out there and you try to trade and and you're looking at something because oh you know i want to jump into uber or because i heard it's public i just used yesterday oh what's going on with amazon or facebook you know there's a whole world out there there are things that you're qualified to trade and there's things that you're not qualified to trade and that's where the discipline does come with it now, um, I don't want to take too much time, but it is 11 o'clock, and I want to get right into it, and I want to introduce, uh, introduce uh, our first speaker. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Norman, okay? I don't know if you know this guy, but he's been doing this, educating for almost four decades. He's 40 years. He told me he's seven years old, 70 years old. I'm like, you know, we're not seven years old. You're like 50. He's like, no, I'm not old. I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're doing with yourself, but where you getting that magic juice, uh, the fountain of youth, you got to pass it on to me because I mean, I got my hair, but I'm just starting to go gray. But he's been, um, he's been around for a long, long time. I've done so many events with him. He's, um, you know, not only is he entertaining, he's very educational and he cares. And that's why we like to have Norman to come out, come out here. And he's one of the pioneers that started this, you know, before most people ever went, ever touched this industry in, in general. But, um, but he does have a, a very good niche where if you're a futures trader, a Forex trader, an option stock trader, you can kind of apply everything what he's doing because a lot of it is discipline and the psychology part of it is so so difficult to succeed when it comes to trading. But, you know, like I said, he's, if you ever get the opportunity to meet him in person, he's the nicest guy. He cares about everything. He always wants to work, you know, help people out. But it also, and not only that, but he also makes an investment 
in his in his um, in his preaching. I mean, he'll go out there and he'll and here's a guy I, I know that he'll even spend money and take education for other people because remember, great traders never stop learning. You know, and we'll go out there if it's a, you know taking a Tony Robbins class, wherever it is. The whole point about it is that we love what we do, and great education never stops. So, without without uh, further ado, which Norman always loves that word, he always abused me about it. But uh, without that, um, I want to pass it over to him. He's going to talk for about an hour, and um, you know, just sit back and enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, you know, stage is all yours, Norman. Go ahead, go knock him dead. Thank you, Fausto, for the terrific introduction. I hope I can live up to it. I want to thank you for having me here. Let's also thank everybody uh, for coming and um, being part of the presentation. I think you're really going to like what's going to happen in this next hour as well as the next couple of few hours. Uh, my presentation is going to be on six effective ways to place stops. That'll be the beginning of the presentation where I will show you a number of different ways to uh, place stops. There are no perfect ways to place stops. I mean, if you think about it, place stops is just a way to get out of something that's not working out, or in any case, of course, preserving a profit. But in generally, it's a it's a defensive posture. So uh, sometimes it seems that uh, there aren't very good outcomes when you place stops. You get knocked out, and then it goes without you, and so on. But there are necessary evil in the in the um, trading world because. You, you need to prevent yourself from taking a large loss. Uh, that's the most debilitating thing when it comes to the mental and emotional issues of trading. And of course, as Fausto mentioned, my, my, my focus has always been on the mental and emotional issues, uh, mental and emotional issues of trading. If you think about it, 91% or 92% of traders don't make money. They lose or they, or they stay the same. Most of them are losing. Uh, only six, seven, eight percent are making money. Uh, and when I go to large venues and, and speak and so on and uh, over the years, over the decades, I've also noticed that it's probably 91 percent of traders who don't give any mind to the mental and emotional aspects of trading. So I put the two together. I think if you start paying attention to the mental and emotional aspects and having a trading plan that respects uh, your attention to mental and emotional aspects, uh, then you're going to do a lot better and actually making a living from this in, in many cases. So uh, my focus, as I mentioned, has always been on the mental and emotional issues that, for decades. And then what happened was that uh, I realized I was uh, helping traders to be disciplined to trading plans that were just lousy. They didn't have any um, risk management posture and uh, no real control to the trading plan. Uh, poor execution methodologies and so on. And so I decided I would choose to make simple trading plans. I've always been into simple trading plans. I'm a guy that likes to make as many trades as I can. I believe that, that when you get a trigger the way you want it, uh, you want to take advantage of as many of those as you can. I mean, in a 70-30 world or a 65-35 world or whatever it is, uh, wins to losses, you're much better off, I believe, in um, making as many trades as you can and getting through to the next trade, getting, taking the next opportunity. Of course, not, not uh, curtailing a, a profit when it's running for you. I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying that if something is not working out, I'd rather exit and go to the next um, trade, as well as operating a simple trading plan, one that doesn't have so many screens that I only get a trade every two years on it. So I'm, that's my thing. Mental and emotional control and and making the trading plan simple. And then at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give you a simple trading plan that you can work with. I think you're going to find it very, very, very uh, work very well for you. And then I'm going to invite you to a uh, to be a founder of this particular simple trading plan that I call Loaded Gun. Uh, I want you to. I'll, I'm going to offer you to be a founder at a ridiculously low price that you may want to be involved in as we. Uh, even move further into this uh, trading plan to to tighten it, tighten it, tighten it. Even in its skeletal form that I'll be showing it to you, you're going to see some some uh, very impressive results. But I'm always looking to be even better and better. And so um, that's what this uh, that's what it's going to be all about today. So let's get going. Six effective ways uh, to place stops. 
Uh, what you're looking at here is me on the left, and that's my brother, uh, that's my twin brother, my late twin brother Bob on the right, and my older brother Dan in the middle. Uh, he's a year and a half, I, I'm sorry, he's 13 months older. And just to, just to give you a little background on me, um, I'm, probably, I'm smiling now, just like on that picture on the left. Um, I was born uh, to parents that, um, that just, my father was in World War II and uh, got home and they had kids and here we are. They, we, we lived in the living room of my, grand, my father's parents' uh, um, apartment for two years. The three of us <laughs> and my parents living in my, my, uh, my grandparents' living room. They said my mother lost her sense of humor during that period of time, and um, you can probably understand why. But I got a very close family. There's another brother that came eight years after me, and, and my twin brother. Uh, so the four of us are, 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 are terrific buddies. Of course, I mentioned my, uh, my twin brother, Bob, passed away, which I still think about every day. Uh, he was the good twin. So you're being taught by the other guy. Uh, today. But um, then when I was 31, I finally got married. I stopped. I was in the nightclub business and um, the restaurant business in the 70s. Um, I went ahead and uh, in 1979, uh, I joined an option firm and started selling Makata Metals Corporation options. on. This is before exchange traded options on the physical metal, on, on physical gold and silver. Makata still is the largest warehouser of gold and silver in the world, and I think the largest independently held corporation in the world, the gigantic. And um, they, uh, we, we used to sell options on their metals before exchange traded options. Anyway, um, I, years later, I ran that firm for, you know, until 1988. Um, I was a regional vice president for them, and had 60 brokers under me, and so you know our job was to to do as uh, as well by the clients as we can in the world of gold and silver. But in 1981, a couple of years after I started with that firm, I met my wife, and of course I was trading during that period of time. I I helped the brokers out, and then I'd go back in the upstairs and I'd start trading. It's where I got my first experience trading. But I was all over the place. My wife happens to be a a um, subconscious trainer. And uh, in our in the discipline traders, she's the one that supplies all the content, helps helps the traders uh, with me uh, on the mental and emotional issues, helps you to put into your head the things that you should be uh, thinking about when you're trading, and, and your own self concepts as a trader. But it's it was her that turned my trading around, and that's why I. Uh, I wanted to bring it to the world and started the whole thing uh, 20 years ago, the, uh, the, the, the Discipline Trader. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, the Discipline Trader had, a, uh, had an issue with helping people stick to religiously to lousy trading plans. So a couple of years ago, I decided to, bail, to, 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 to have a new focus along with my old focus, and that's simple trading plans. And again, we're gonna, I'm going to show you one at the end. But... Tisha turned my life around and hopefully you have somebody in your life. Like we've been married now 38 years. So, and we do other things. Every trader has to have a, a, an outlet. You don't, you know, you can't let trading control your life. You have to, trading should be part of your life, not in control of your life. What you're looking at are, are we raise butterflies, we raise monarch butterflies. And what you're looking at is a bunch of caterpillars, monarch caterpillars that, uh, after they make a chrysalis, 10 days later, they turn into these butterflies of which we dry out in these little cages we have. And um, anytime you come to my house about one o'clock in the afternoon, uh, we'd be glad to have you help us release these butterflies. They can jump right on your hand and, and they go. So, you know, I'm, I, you gotta relax as a trader because the trading is intense and, uh, and it takes a lot of focus. It may se seem like all you're doing is buying and then selling and, and rooting for it in between. But as you're adjusting stops and doing things uh, along the way, things are, um, you know, they, 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 it's stressful. Come on, we all know that. That's uh, why we're here, I guess, to also to help um, eliminate some of that stress. So uh, let's get into the, uh, uh, the six techniques that I want to cover. And, and then I want to kind of show you an application in the uh, simple trading plan. Uh, the Bollinger, I'm going to show you more than six, and I'm going to go through them because ah, you'll see why. The Bollinger Bands is, uh, is getting to be more and more popular. I just learned about this a couple of years ago. Uh, the future features of the Bollinger Band trading plan uh, or uh, stop 
uh, stopping methodology is uh, riding, it rides the favored side of the middle band. In the in a Bollinger Band, you've got the two extreme bands. It, it, Bollinger Band metal, it, it, it's, a, it's a volatility measure. And as the markets get more volatile, the bands exp expand. I'm going to show you that in a second. And then there's a mid-band. Uh, the average of the two bands rides in the middle of the two in uh, upper and lower bands. And it's that middle band is the break point. Uh, you ride the band, you, you ride the price until it crosses the other side of that mid-band. Uh, the problem with the uh, Bollinger Bands is, it, as, as with many um, stopping methodologies, it's, it's a little tough in ranges. There's only, uh, you know, ranges can be tough to place stops in, and, and this is not as effective as, as it could be. Uh, here's, a, here's a chart for the, um, this is a chart of WTR, which is Aqua America. It's a water stock that I, the, the methodologies that I teach you, whether it's simple trading plans, the um, the, the, these stopping procedures, they all work on any market, um, whether it's stocks or futures or Forex, and they work on any time frame in, the, in all these cases. So here you have um, the uh, WTR stock moving around. It doesn't really matter the price. And we're just looking at the, the stock itself and, and the movement in price. Each bar, of course, I'm, I'm assuming here that you're familiar with the candlesticks. And red meaning that the that the uh, that the that we closed on the low of the candle, and, and if it's red, it cl it, it cl closed below the open. If it's green, it closed above the open. Um, but this blue line is the outer, is the upper Bollinger Band, and this is the lower Bollinger Band in red. And this white line is the midline of the Bollinger Band. Um, so, you know, as you can see the drop here happened, you had a, you had a, a consolidating market here. So the bands were not far from each other. Once this thing dropped, um, the Bollinger Bands gave you room on both sides of, of, um, of the midline, of course. And as the market uh, tends to um, tighten up again, the Bollinger Bands will come together. So generally you're taking you're looking for channels like this when you're trading via Bollinger Band and you're waiting for a breakout and a widening of the band so this would be an area where um, I'm sure a lot of people got caught this is probably a report that came out or something um, this is not a this is normal for that kind of this is a look that I'm seeing here it's not really normal for it to, without some tremendous news where it all closes here and, and then opens down here but assuming you're uh, you're looking for a spot to get into a trade. Let's say the market gap down and you want to get short here. Okay, you're getting short and in this particular, in placing your stop, you're going to be placing, you're short here and you're placing your stop on the other side of this midline. So in other words, uh, wherever the Bollinger Band, wherever this midline is, so you're, you're here, so you'll be placing your stop up here because all of this, of course, didn't exist when you, when you shorted the market here. You'd be placing your stop here. And as the market came down, you'd be moving your stop with each band uh, above, in this case, wh whatever, whatever bar you're looking at, you'd be moving your stop. When you got to here, your stop would be on the other side of this bar. Well, as, as the market moves sideways, the, the Bollinger Bands are coming together. And so, of course, the midline is, is, is getting nearer to your pricing. And at this point, right here, this small red dot here, from here to here, at this small red dot, you'd be having your, your stop, and you'd be stopped out of this short trade. Um, and you can see here's another long trade. Uh, if, if you got in for whatever reason here and rode this up, uh, you, would, you would be breaking the band here. Um, breaking the midline here, and therefore uh, you'd, you'd be out of your long trade uh, at this point here. So it's a simple way of, of having to stop it. It respects to some degree the volatility of the market, but it can, uh, can whip you around a bit. Um, when you see action like this sideways, it's always good to think about tightening up your stop. Uh, because if it breaks in the wrong direction, um, and this Bollinger Band actually did that for you by coming all the way down here by that time. Um, so uh, that's what this the Bollinger Band is about. I would say that as far as distance from the uh, midline, give it a few ticks. Um, one thing I will state right now is that if, you, if you're dealing with where to place your stop uh, in this particular case, how far above or below the, I mean, how, how far above the band in this case, a couple of ticks, 
10 ticks, that's up to you. I like to give it a little bit of room, five, six, seven, eight ticks increments, um, a tick increments. Um, I don't like to make it one tick because you can, it's, it is too easy to get knocked out. Now, neither one, I've seen successful traders do the one tick thing and that's fine um, because uh, really you'll get stopped out more. But if, if I'm widening my stop, when I get stopped out, I'm going to lose more money. So in the very long scheme of things, it tends to even itself out. It's about your own ability to stay positive and um, it's your own ability to, um, to keep what I call a, a positive expectation. If you find yourself getting knocked out a lot, or if you take bigger losses than the smaller losses, and that makes you feel horrible and somehow it's ruining your, your, your canter in the market, then, then you want to tighten your, you, you may want to think of not taking so big, taking more losses, but smaller losses. You've got to figure out what you can handle and what you can't, what makes you, uh, what keeps you positive you've got to stay positive when you're um when you are trading so let's continue uh the second fib this is the fibonacci level which is one of my least favorite although it's probably it's 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 used by a lot of especially those that are math oriented and i'm math oriented and i have my degrees are in in, uh, in math and and somehow though i i find that fibonacci wants to be exact but seldom lands on the on the Fibonacci levels uh, and therefore supports that that makes sense in the long term. I don't use it, but a lot of people do, so I'm showing it to you. Fib can act as a support or resistance level during a trend. Uh, stop loss methods, um, this particular for stop loss, it doesn't, this particular one also doesn't work in ranges very well. Uh, I will show you one that, that will, and that's mostly the pattern types, but Let's take a look, and th these lines, I'm sorry these are a little hard to see. I'm using a different presentation vehicle. I'm on a different computer today, but, but don't worry too much about it, other than knowing that these shadows of lines here are Fibonacci retracement points, and you, you probably have used them before. The ones that are popular are 0 0.38, 0 0.62, and the 50% line. Uh, in recent, uh, um, you've got a 70, I think it's 73, I don't use them, in 23, but it, you see, what happens is you see this this movement up here, uh, this move from down here to up here, this the, the length of this uh, particular up move, and then all of a sudden you have a corrective action. You say to yourself, well, how far is this correction action going to go? So what you do is you you take your tool and you start at the bottom of the of the of the run, and you go to the top of the run. You let go of your Fibonacci tool, and it plots these lines for you. And you're looking for the market to to stop at one of these lines and 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 then look for a trigger to, con to for continuation in the right direction. In this particular case, uh, if you look at this uh, this level right here, which I believe is the thirty, looks like the thirty eight point three eight level, and um, these are you can't see it, but there are wicks that come and hit that line. They don't always, but in the, I showed you one that did. Sometimes they'll 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 drop a little bit below, a little bit above, but the idea is that you, you need to look at this level as a, a level that, that you're going to have some, resist, some support in on the way down. It certainly didn't give a support at th this upper level here, but it did give, it looks like after this steady area here, um, it, it market drop came up, came back down, and now it tested it again here and, and survived the test here. The fact that you have two bottoms here, you know, you're going to be whispering double bottom to yourself and you'll probably take a trade here. When you take that tr long trade here, then you're going to put your stop a few ticks below uh, this Fibonacci level, wherever that may be. If you have a wick that, that came below that level here, I would, I would adjust that to a few ticks below that wick level as long as it's not too far different than, than the Fibonacci level. So, uh, and, and as the market moves higher, you're going to move your stop up to in whatever way that you want. And I suggest two bars, not one bar. A lot of, a lot of traders like to put it below one bar and, and as the market expands, uh, you put it below one bar and then with this tail, you would have been knocked out of this trade here because you would have had it below this bar. Um, and you still would have been knocked out with two bars um, in this area someplace here. So. You want to trail your stop, but your initial stop will go below here. Now that's the Fibonacci. Uh, this is a this is a subtly 
um, but I don't want to confuse you if, if you're not used to Fibonacci. You can study it and, and deal with it, but it's again, it's another support level that you're going to put your, you're going to defend your stop on the opposite side. Okay, moving averages. Uh, somebody did comment here that moving averages with the way they uh, like to use um, their stops. And it can give you a lot, the thing about it is it can give you a lot of waiting uh, for a break of the of moving average. You can give up a lot. In other words, uh, and that's true of a lot of stops, as I mentioned. The market will back up, and if you've got a deep stop, you're going to give back a lot of your profit. So, which is why I give you this nuance. This is my, my first nuance. It's, it's a nuance in all of this. I've made four simple trading plans. I'm trying to make one every few months. This is, again, the latest one is, is uh, uh, loaded gun, which is the best one so far. And, but I, I want to say that you want to start with two positions. You want to initiate your position with at least mul with multiple positions, which is the minimum of which would be two. Okay. Because in any trigger, whenever you get in on a, on a, on a, on a trade, generally you're getting in on a trigger that really means that the market is about you know, as a reason to go up, it's decidedly gone up because of some indication, either volume or whatever you use. The, 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 that fact usually makes the next bar or two in your favor. I say take some profit in those bar or two, put a little in your pocket, and then manage your remaining positions, even if it's just one position in, in a two-position approach. Okay, so I give you that because I, I, I don't want to leave without mentioning that. I can't tell you how much you'll improve your trading results by trading multiple positions and peeling off the first, the first position on the, on the initial move on the initial reaction to the, that trigger, okay? So um, in moving averages, you wanna watch the moving average slope to avoid a uh, false change of direction. I'll show you what that means in a second. Mostly when I, when I give you the simple trading plan, uh, that's something we have to watch because that simple trading plan uses a moving average. So using a moving average to set your stop, uh, it's dynamic, it moves as, the move, as, as each bar goes, you're, you're moving your stop because it's moving average. And, um, you got to give it some room because moving average really is just an average. What I, when I like to use um, exponential moving averages is because exponential moving averages gives a little bit more weight to the more current bars. So when you're using moving averages and you're using it to, or to place stops, I suggest you, you may want to try exponential moving averages for, for stop placement. Okay, here's a, here, this is overstock. It's a stock I follow. Uh, because it's really in the Bitcoin world. Um, they're, they, they use the underlying technology that they're, um, believe it or not, and um, it's kind of moves. It did for a while, doesn't really anymore use it with Bitcoin. But here is, let's take, this is three moving averages. Uh, this is the 200 day moving average. This is the 50 day moving average. And this is the 20 day moving average. So, you know, the, just different moving averages um, that I always have on my charts. And I just clip this one off. Let's take the 50-day moving average. Let's say we're working where we're, um, uh, well, if you're using it as a stop, you want a moving average that, 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 that hugs it fairly closely. Now, the 20-day moving average may not be enough for you. I, I find it good. Um, this is a daily chart, so, um, you know, I, I think the 20-day moving average makes sense. If you have more risk tolerance and you want to move the 50, use a 50-day moving average for your stop, you can do that. But the idea is that if you use this close-in moving average, the 20, then you're, you're, you're staying with the moving average. Uh, and if it crosses on this side, the opposite side of the moving average, you were looking at a downtrend. So here we are above the moving average. You would have been stopped out with a close stop. Here, if, if you kept your, your stop considerably away from the moving average, uh, you know, 10 ticks or whatever, you may not have been stopped out here. So you've got to find the right medium for yourself. Again, matching your own personality. But you can see how, um, you can see how uh, the market, w when it's going strong, will, 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 will honor that moving average. Uh, here's, a, here's where you would have been stopped out and uh, not involved in what's happening here. Uh, here's another one where there's a, another short trade here. We've got, here's a long trade using the yellow moving average where you would have gotten, this is a nice trigger right here. I'm gonna talk more about this trigger later with a very small body or a doji followed by a dramatic move uh, in the next candle. That's a big time signal, one of my favorite signals. And um, so you would have gotten in here, you would have put your stop underneath this moving average and, and, and kept it under the moving average as this trade matured and gotten stopped out here. So you would have, you would have gotten, 
in here and you would have gotten stopped out here. So you would have had from here to about here. Not a huge trade for all this time that you spent, but I will say again, that if you follow my, my nuance here and take two positions here, not one, or multiple positions, three, four, five, whatever it is, whatever, you can, whatever you, your account size can stand, and liquidate one of your positions out of two or one out of three on this first thrust up, get out of one here. Okay, well, you're going to wind up seeing, and if you do this, you're going to wind up seeing that many times, not all the time, but, you know, 25% of the time, you're going to spend a lot of time managing the second, the second position and get out at the same price that you took this other one at. So one of, the, one of the trading plans I'm working on right now is just a matter of taking advantage of these thrusts, which come often, and then moving on to the next situation with a thrust. But don't go doing that until I've tested it and so on. I'm just telling you that, that the idea of using multiple positions and, and peeling it off, I think is an idea you need to think about adopting. Okay, uh, now it doubles your risk from that standpoint. But if you're doing it on a trigger, um, you know, here's another trigger type formation, small body um, at the top of a, almost looks like a shooting stars type thing followed by this candle leads to another trigger. So this is a really good trigger, not to worry too much about it. Now, when you put your stop in, uh, you, 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 you know, you're gonna wanna, if you're using a trigger like this, you wanna put it on the bottom of the trigger formation. I'll show you more about that later. Okay, so that's what the moving average stops are all about. Here's the fourth technique, price formation and price patterns. I'm gonna move a little faster now. Um, because I've got a lot to say here. Uh, it really goes by the book, Beware of Stop Loss. You know, people look at flags and, for, and, and head and shoulders. Traders are constantly picking off, you know, they call them stop loss hunters. I, I, I don't know if they actually exist or not, but it certainly seems like they're out there doing it. Um, I know that there are some trading plans by some very negative people that are trying to take advantage of that, knowing people are going to put their stops on the other side on a very strong move based on other indications, and they just pick people off. Uh, in any event, I'm not sure that's even, but, but the idea is that um, you got to give all stops a little bit of room. Let's take a look at some pennants and flags. And this is not the perfect chart probably to do it, but I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time on it other than to say, you know that we have flags when you see a, con you know, um, a, fla a flag like this where you, where you have a... Um, um, a consolidation of some sort with, an, with a, um, a line moving higher and a, a flat top, uh, more of a flat formation on the top. When you see a break of that pattern, you go with it and you put your stop at the opposing, uh, uh, at the opposite side of the breakout line or breakdown line in this case. So you'd be putting your stop up here um, and as the market matured, you'd be using, you following it one or two uh, bars. Again, I recommend two, not one. Um, and so, uh, that's all I'll say about that. Here's a, here's a, here's more of a, um, a channel right here or, or a pennant, uh, where you see, it, you see it starting to go sideways. You join the bottoms. Now there's a con, you know, whether you, whether you use the wicks, ends of the wicks to draw your lines or you use the body, the, the, the bodies, I try to use bodies a lot. I use them both. I interchange them if you really want to know the truth. I, I think that, that there's, um, you know, I, I think there's some intelligence to both. The idea is that um, I think once you decide on one for a certain approach, stick with it. Don't go moving it around and moving your stop just because it broke the body and not the wick line. Uh, make up your mind. It's like, it's like whether you should take a, a, a hit in blackjack or not. You either always do it or you never do it. If you start mixing it around, you're going to hurt yourself. So here's a, here's a, a band that was formed, a channel, a, a flag that was formed, or a, a pennant, I guess. And, and it looks like we had a, a bit of a false break out here. And if you had just stopped too close, you may have been stopped out with a small line. But you had another break out here and another stop out. So this didn't really work very well. But you had some nice close stops maybe. And if you, if you didn't have a close stop and you had your stop, uh, closer to down here because this is a small channel. You could probably put your stop just above midway. You would have been in this trade all the way until we reached, this looks like a head and shoulders. I've given you the arrows, uh, shoulder, head and shoulder here. And um, so, and you draw your neckline from your, the, bo the bottom of the beginning of the first shoulder and the end of the second shoulder. 
which was at the bottom of this where I drew it. And if it breaks that, uh, you're going to um, initiate a new trade. Well, if you initiate the short trade here, you're going to have your stop above the neckline. So it's whatever trading formation you're looking at, you're, you're putting in your stop at the, uh, at the other side of, of whatever breakout line that you used. Okay, enough about that. And here's a, well, I guess it's not enough about that. I got another chart here, the soy. It's soy tends to, I find soy tends to work well with, with flags and pennants. Um, I'm not showing you any breakouts here, but I'm just showing you how in this particular case I, I use the, um, the wicks to, to draw the line. And here I use these two wicks and then I, because it, it, it seemed to be coming down the market and see these two wicks were formed, this one here and this one here. So I drew the line, maybe looking for some sort of a thing. It never really reached. So as we came down and spent time, I decided to make another line. Here's where you start creating a fan, which is something that, that I tend to do or that traders with experience will, will tend to do. And that, that kind of gives you another target up here if you do go long here, you can have another, you have a, a target to, uh, to maybe take a partial profit and, and what may be a resistance um, up here. So some of these lines could be useful in other ways. I'm, I'm just kind of showing you that. All right, uh, trend lines and support and resistance. Technique number five. Very popular, probably the most popular. Uh, so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, I don't know. Um, uh, but I tend to think that it can be. So again, use a little room to, um, to um, put in your stops. Uh, again, drawing trend lines is subjective. It's suitable for ranges at uh, this particular, and you'll see why it's easy to see. And um, support flips into resistance. That's what support resistance flips. I mean, here's the, here's the S&P market. Um, um, it's a recent contract. You can see the, you know, the fall that we had in December. And then this, um, this movement recently. And uh, you can see that once these two, now of course this part of the chart didn't exist when this top happened and this top happened. So I drew the line. So happens that it really gave me a nice indicator here. Um, this is an obvious trade to take, of course, because you've got a, I, I usually wait for closes before I initiate trades. I always wait for closes. So here's something that, that was a shooting star against a resistance area. I mean, that's a short trade if I ever saw one. So at the end of this day, at the close here, the open of the next day with confirmation, you're shorting this market. You'd be here, you'd, be, you'd have this market all the way down, then you'd be putting your stop uh, above this, um, above the uh, uh, resistance area. So if it breaks resistance and moves higher, you'd be out. Uh, but quickly, once this bar happened, again, that formation I really like, the, small head, uh, like a, almost a doji, in this case, a shooting star followed, you know, indecision followed by a, a major decision. And look where it leads, it led all the way to this down here. Now what happened is, uh, once this happened, again, this didn't exist, we got a bottom here, I connected these two bottoms, so I got two really nice support and resistance lines that look, look at this, worked out really well over here, gave, gave us some action over here. So these you know, as you extend them out, they still have meaning because there's a lot of people that defended positions here for the very long term and defended positions here and they'll defend them even later. Um, what I mean by defending is I'll, I'll talk about that some other time. But um, so here we, had a, uh, here we had a poke below, but it closed within. So, you, you know, um, you're still short. And, but if you were looking to get short, you wouldn't be yet here. This would get you short if you had no trade on. And then you'd be putting your stop up here. If you had put your stop up here and, and, and did what I suggested, waiting for a, a major move on the downside to take out one position, you probably took a, a little bit of a profit here, maybe waited till it got to this resistant, resistance on the way down here. Maybe you took out one position here, a second position on a three position phase here, and then waiting for what I call lewd and lascivious for the rest of it. And so it came down and, and you, did very, you did very well on this and, and you're either trailing it with one position or two. Same thing on the way up, we had a hesitation here. So, you know, support and resistance, pretty obvious, but I wanna to get to one that, uh, that isn't so obvious. This is another one in copper where we're, we're, we're kind of uh, jumping up in time. So I, I wanna, again, this is a trend line connecting bottoms. And there's another way to move your stop. If you were in on this particular, uh, let's say, you, say you're say you in on here on this movement. You drew a trend line, market came off, the, you drew this trend line because you got in on this 
formation here on this jump that took out this high. You're long here. Um, now you're going to put your stop below this trend line that you drew, connecting these two bottoms, and you're moving your stop you know, as it, as it comes up along the trend line. One other way to move the stop, uh, it, once you've got the initial stop in here, is to, um, is, is to look for these swing bottoms. When you see another swing bottom, uh, then you would be moving your stop from here to here. Another one, uh, this didn't look like, this started to flatten out here, so it would have been out over here anyway, more than likely, um, when the trend line broke. So um, I like to continue, if I'm using a trend line stop, I like to continue with the trend line, because really these bottoms are only going to hold usually if they honor the trend line anyway. Um, so, all right, average true range. I wanna, I wanna state it and then I want you to play with it uh, after this is all over and you hear all the speakers and so on. You're using an average true range. Uh, somebody showed me this a couple of years ago, I just think it's genius. Um, average true range really respects momentum and volatility. So it's set to, you set it to 14, which is the default setting for average true range. And you wanna have a new calculation and I'll show you that calculation each with each high or low as the move expands. Okay, let me show you what, what this means. Here it is, this is a, I'm gonna to have to state it to you, so you write it down. It's, again, it's very simple, I don't do anything too complicated. So, but here's a chart, just look at the chart real quickly, and you can see that, you know, maybe you've done nothing up to this point, but at this yellow arrow, this could have been a trade. I mean, you're, you're watching this level right around here where I'm drawing the arrow, it's holding, held here, held here, held here. Now you've got a double bottom, you see it's holding here. This is a nice place to take a trade. So, um, I mean, you could have drawn a, a support resistance line here, taken the trade and put the stop under here somewhere. But here's, here's how to do it with the average true range. And I, I like it because it respects the volatility of the market. Here's the formula. You take the close of the entry bar. Here's your entry bar. You take the close of the entry bar, which in this case was 147 and 15 30 seconds. I probably shouldn't use bonds because we're in 30 seconds. The math is a little... Uh, tough, but for, it's 140, this bar closed at 147 and 15, 30 seconds. Well, the average true range during that bar is right here, which is 0.35, uh, 3650. If you convert that to, um, if you convert that to um, uh, 30 seconds, you're looking at 12, 30 seconds. So it's 12, 12, 30 seconds is, uh, is the, is, is what, the average true range is here, 0 0.3650. So you double that. So now we're talking 0 0.730, okay, 0 0.73. You double the average true range and, and you subtract it from the, from the close of that bar. So the close of that bar was 147, 15, 30 seconds. We're subtracting twice 0.365, which is 12, 30 seconds, so it's 24, 30 seconds. So 147 and 15, 30 seconds minus 24, 30 seconds is 146 and 23, 30 seconds, which is right here. Really a nice place to put the stop. Happens to be right below this wick, but um, it's a nice place to put the stop. It honors the volatility of the market. So when I say move the stop, when you get additional high, here's a meaningful high. Uh, nothing's no reason to change your stop here and then boom we have another stop here so let's do it again let's move our stop in this particular case the closing price here is 148 and 13 30 seconds 148 and 13 30 seconds we look at the the average true range during that period of time it's 0.44 which is uh, roughly 13 20 seconds 13 30 seconds uh, so twice 13, 30 seconds is 26, 30 seconds. So uh, again, you double the average true range, subtract it from the close of the action bar. So in this particular case, we've got an action bar. Four, four, one, so uh, 148, 13, 30 seconds minus 26, 30 seconds is 147 and 16, 30 seconds, which is right here. So you can see how that's nice. Now, what's interesting is, it's almost the same distance from the close of the bar, and here it's the same distance, but we have a higher volatility, you'd think that it would be further away. But remember, we're measuring it from the close of the bar, which happens to be way up here. This is a big candle. That's why this line hugs it a little bit more, uh, even though it's a higher volatility. So it takes a lot of things into account. Here's another into account. Here's another uh, bar that I felt was meaningful.
well, it took out these highs. So you'd be recalculating here and you'd be setting your stop here. After that recalculation, you'd be stopped out in here. So that's uh, kind of a nice trade. But again, if you took my advice and, and the nuance and the multiple positions, you got in two here, you took a profit somewhere on, in this bar here as it expanded. I like to see, when I take my, I like to see it expand an equal distance to my entry bar because I like to get in on expanding bars. If you're saying, well, what do you mean by expanding bars? Somewhere when I see it's about the size of this bar, I'm looking to take profit. I'm taking it and then moving on. Um, so I probably take my profit somewhere in here and then you're, you're managing the second position. Try this average true range bar. I think you're really going to like it. Uh, really going to like it. Okay, I, I promised you, uh, well, I want to show you just the last slide. Under the last swing low, we talked about that for other stopping techniques, a time stop. If something's not happening, if I get five bars in a row that, that are going sideways, I'm looking, you know, I'm, I'm looking to draw a band around the top, a line of support and resistance around that, that range of sideways movement. And I'm looking for a breakout one way or the other to keep me in or keep, get me out. But, um, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking to get out because it's not happening. The further you move from the action bar, the less that action bar has an effect. So um, money stop, we talked, I don't know if we talked about a 300, uh, I mentioned if I use $100 or $10,000 as an account size, small account of $10,000, you don't want to take any more than $300 risk on any trade. So is it smart to just set your stop at $300? A lot of people say no. I say maybe. There are some places where, and I'll show you a couple of those in a second, um, especially after jump triggers, what I call jump triggers, which is all I try to get in on. Um, I don't have a problem with doing that for small accounts. It allows you to get into trades. It allows you to keep your, your, your risk at a point where you can handle it. And most of the time, some triggers will expand and you'll be able to actually take a, one of the trade out trades uh, out uh, if you use my nuance of two or more positions. Okay, um, and then two bars back. I mentioned as the market's going higher, uh, put it at the, at the uh, low in the case of an upward move, uh, a couple of ticks below two bars back, okay? so. Here's a simple trading plan. This is now we're going to get really exciting because I just want to spend about five minutes on this and then get you an offer. And in five minutes, I'm going to be able to explain this simple trading plan. Okay, here it is. Oh, forget that. First, let me explain that the first line here has no meaning. Um, I didn't erase that as a nick in the slide uh, for the other slide. Fits, a simple trading plan fits in one, on one sheet of paper. Okay, it fits on one sheet of paper. Simple. It has one primary analysis technique, and then a loading gun that I'm going to give you right now. The loading gun trading plan um, has uses a, a, a eight bar moving average. Okay, it has a repeatable entrance trigger, and I'm going to show you that formation in a second. A trigger to enter on. It's got a defined strategy. Okay, um, and um, it, it com contains a, com a complete contain. Uh, trading strategy and it's customizable. I won't get into the last part so much here except for that's part of what the nuances are. I will say that um, if you go to the discipline, if you go to, I'm sorry, simpletradingplans.com, you'll see the three trading plans that we offer right now in a package for different kinds of markets. Uh, what I'm, what I'm going to show you today is a fourth one that I've developed over the last few months that I think is, it could be better than the others. I think it is. Uh, maybe it's because it's the most recent one, but um, I really, really like it. And I think you're going to like it in about five minutes from now. Um, because when you, and in fact, after this, when you go home, when, when the, all of these, when the speakers are over and you start looking at this simple trading plan on charts, you're going to want to sign up and be a, 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 a founder of this because it's very inexpensive and I want you to be part of this. Because the release comes in, in June of this year. I mean, next month, June is the, is the launch of, of this a uh, sim particular simple trading plan loaded gun, but I want you in before so that you can you can play with it and work with it and give me some some uh, some testimonials that I can share with other people. So I want you to be successful with this, and so that I can help it can help in my own market. It's selfish, but uh, you know you're, you're going to pay one third of what everybody less than that. What everybody's going to pay less than that. So let me show you what. Let me show you what the trading plan is. Okay, here it is. Here are your rules. Loaded gun. First of all, you, the analysis that we're using is the, the analysis that we're applying is the exponential moving average set to eight. Not nine. A lot of places have nine, ten, seven, eight, 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 eight. Okay. The trigger is a two candle setup. I've kind of mentioned it. A joji followed by an extended candle that closes above or below that moving average. 
Okay, so the two candle setup, the doji followed by the extension that crosses the EMA. Okay, here are, uh, here are some clear examples of what I mean by those particular uh, extensions, uh, the, the two candle uh, movement. So here you have a doji. Uh, this is almost a doji. A doji is where it's totally equal. Again, I'm assuming uh, really that you know about uh, candlesticks and that um, the green bar means that the, the, the close is above the open. Red means that the close is below the open. It opened here, closed here, and these, the wick, the, 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 the stick below and above the, the horizontal line is where the trades occurred outside of the open and closing range. So here you get, this means indecision. Here we opened at a certain place. We didn't range very much. Uh, during, even during the day, and we close about where we open. They can't decide what to do with this market. Well, the next va va boom, they have made a decision and a strong decision. This trigger, I find, could be the best trigger around that I've found. Um, and so I, I like to take advantage of this trigger. Okay, that's a buy trigger. Here is a similar version of the trigger. It's a little bit bigger um, range. I, I don't like this a whole lot, but the fact that it's got a very long tail on one side, if this is on the bottom of a run, the market's coming down, you've got a bottom of a run, you've got, this, this is almost a hammer. Uh, strictly, this wick on the top wouldn't be there for a hammer. Um, Thor would never accept this as a hammer, so I can't. But, but the idea is that it's a very small body and, um, and it, it, sh it shows indecision, followed by a, a, a movement, a, a dramatic movement higher. Now, I'd like this movement, I'd like this bar to be more dramatic. I would definitely like it to be more dramatic, but I can't, you know, I don't, um, I can't have it any more dramatic than, uh, than this because that's the way, it's the way life is. So um, let me take that away. All right. um, so, but the fact that we, we're coming off a long candle makes this um, more meaningful, the pulling away from the candle. It's kind of a formation that the market may be reversing. If this formation crosses the eight person um, if this, uh, the eight bar um, formation, then I'm, then I'm in. Uh, here's a cell candle, same kind of thing, only on the cell side. Uh, small indecision followed by a dramatic decision. What you gotta watch in a trigger like this is that this, this doesn't create too much of a risk. Because if you're taking a short trade based on this trigger, you're putting your stop above the formation. Okay, in this particular case, you're putting your stop below the formation, below the formation. So you've gotta measure that uh, because markets can reverse and take you out too, and you don't want this stop to be below your tolerance level, okay? All right, so here's an example of, of a, it was set, a setup crossing the uh, eight-day moving average. Um, here's your eight-day, eight-bar moving average. You've got, a, you've got a, a trigger here, small body extension, followed by followed by your um, extension of the move. But here, here's again, here's the perfect version of it. Doji movement here. When I see that, I move my stop from here to up here, because now I got a new formation, a trigger formation. If it breaks this trigger formation, I'm out. So I use a, a repeated, that same repeated formation to, to move my stop. In addition, again, I'm taking multiple positions, on the first extension, whether it be here or here, I'm taking out one position out of two. Let's say I do the minimum of two positions. I'm taking out here, and I'm, now I'm managing the final position. Okay, I'm managing the final position, and, um, and, and the exit strategy tells me, there are, are, the, the rules say if I get two closes over this line, two closes on the opposite side of the line, that second close, I'm out. So I don't have, a, don't have that happening here but I do get a chance to move my stop from here down to here because I see the, the uh, formation again. All right, so the loaded gun exit rule, again, is when two bars cross on the opposite side of the EMA. So you wait for the trigger. If the trigger, which is the doji and the dramatic bar, cross a, a EMA of nine, uh, eight, then you're in the trade, and then you put your stop in at the top of the formation, and then you ride the EMA as long as it'll take you until two bars cross on the other side of it. Okay, let's take a look what that means. Uh, here's, here's a perfect entrance uh, on, this is uh, S&P. Okay, here's a beautiful, this is the daily chart of the S&P. I mean, perfect entrance, small, 
small head um, on, on this big movement. So you're now you're, you're you're in here with two positions. You're putting your stop down here. Market starts to move higher, moves higher, and you're taking out your first position right around here, about equally distance of here. Probably taking it out here. Now I got one position I'm managing. Uh, nah, it didn't cross the line, but maybe it did. I get I zoom in and I'm really strict about this. I zoom in and yeah, it looks like it did cross, but I need two crosses. No, nope, we're back over. So now I'm I don't I'm two crosses in a row, I should say. So here's another one. Here's one cross below. Here is another cross that was actually below. So you're out of the trade here, even though if you if you kept it on. There's a nuance that would keep you in uh, that I've explained to the to the founders. But here is uh, you would have missed this, but that's fine. We had a big a nice big trade. Here's an interesting. I don't like this signal for two reasons, even though it would have worked out. One is that the risk is very, very big here because this is a big candle. And this is not enough indecision for me. You'll see this plenty of times. So you can, you can wait for what you want. Look at this. Here's, here's one right here that didn't turn out. Small body, even though it's not as small as I like. Big candle. Stop up here. Riding it down. No, not a, nowhere to take out that one position. One close above, two close above. You stopped out of both positions right here. So you're taking a loss from here to here. So that didn't work out. But you've got a scheme uh, to limit your loss, okay? To, to keep it within your own range. Let's keep going. Here's one that's a soybean. Love the soybean. You'll, you'll notice that certain stocks, certain, I, I, uh, Japanese yen, I just had a really nice trade because some of the currencies, Japanese yen been following this. Look at this, repeating the pattern many times over. I mean, it's amazing. Um, you gotta watch it, but sometimes these patterns can lead to exhaustion when you see this. So I'm very careful when I see sideways movement after a trigger. But the first trigger uh, usually doesn't, hey, you got four here, but again, follow the rules. Trigger, sell to, nothing, do nothing, do nothing. You're looking for closes, two closes above here. You got your extension, you're getting out of one of your positions here. You're holding on to the second position or for the last three positions, if you have five or whatever it is, uh, you, you, you still don't have a close, boom. You made, if you had five positions and you took out two here, maybe you take out another one or two here. You're keeping it, it's keeping going, it's keep going. Here's your, you got scared here two days, but it didn't, here's a close above, close below, close above, close below. You're still in it, you're still in it this entire time. Unbelievable, tremendous. So this is the loaded gun. And I'm saying to you that when you, Get rid of, when you get rid of me today, and, and uh, you get rid of the other speakers, but not before you listen to them, check these outs on your chart, and you're going to see that this is the beginning of something big. And I've developed some nuances that makes this even better, okay? Here's a gold trade that I can't really expand with, with the format I'm using right now, but you can see, here's a small trigger here that got you in all the way down. And it happens, I, I did this because you can see the trigger in many different time frames. This is, this is, this is a trade, this screen I trade off of. Here's my, you can see I had a nice profit in this particular trade. And I got in over here. Here's where I got in. This, this looked like a, um, th this was a shooting starish type looking thing, even though it's not at the top of a run. And this is an expansion. But I'm, I've already, seen, this is a dramatic, the moving average is moving down nicely. I got in here. And this was the profit that I had at this point. And I, and, and I, this is on a 15 minute ticker. Okay. So you can see here's a, here's a, a a four, hour, a four hour ticker and you can see the formation. It's a very, very powerful formation, but here's the entrance formation. Here's where you get out of your first position. Here's where you're managing it. Here you got scared as hell, but you're looking for that second close and you never got it, still in it. So take some patience. Take, I, I, and when I take this profit, I move my other stop to break even immediately. Didn't mention that, I should have. Anyway, I just want to, I, I need to make you an offer here because a loaded gun, simple trading plan is something you really need to have. And I'm, I'm going to almost give it away to you here. I, I'm doing this in three classes um, and you'll get access to all of the launch stuff when, when it's launched officially, but I'm doing three private classes, 10 traders per class. Loaded gun trading plan explained is the first meeting. That's going to be a Monday at seven o'clock, uh, the last week of, of this month in May. The second cl class is Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Monday, I'm going to explain in great detail over a full hour, hour and 15 minutes, the loaded gun trading plan in, 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 in total explanation. I gave you some of it today, most of it, or, but I, I need to slow down and really emphasize certain things. I'm going to give you a nuance sheet. There are nuances. 
I'm also going to give you the simple trading plan on one sheet of paper after that first meeting. Now, after that first meeting, if you're not impressed and you don't think the money that I've, I've uh, taken from you is not worth it, I'm going to give you your money back after the first meeting if you don't see it from there. I've had nobody's ever asked for me for the money here on any of the simple trading plans. So you won't be doing it, but that's my offer out there. The second meeting on Tuesday, uh, the, the last Tuesday of the month at 7 p.m., no, the, all of these are recorded, okay? The nuance sheet where I explain all of them to, to really even, um, and the, the list is growing as I just got a new nuance from one of the founders who's working with us and having fun with the system, said, hey, you know, I've noticed that I did this, I'm, I'm making it a nuance. I've, I've looked back now, it's about to be a new nuance. So you're helping me on this too. Um, and then the Q&A at the end. So I explain the loaded gun, the nuances, and then Q&A in the end. And then we have follow-up meetings, a couple of weeks after, a few weeks after. I want to, I want to, you'll always be the founders. You'll always have a special place, okay? Uh, and it's 10 people, and it's on a platform where you can see my face, I can see your face, we can talk about it. You don't have to see your face. We can, we have audio back and forth. We can really get into it because you need to understand the plan. It's very simple, but I need you to emphasize certain things about it. It's going to be released to the public somewhere between $997 and $1497. For you, for the founders, $297. It's next to nothing. I, I, listen, I'm not belittling $297. But what people pay for trading plans and things that are complicated and don't work, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm doing this because I want the testimonials and I want, I want those people who recognize, maybe you'll need a little experience recognizing it, but once you start looking at what you trade, you're going to say to yourself, whoa, this thing, this thing can work. It's, you know, let me get into it. Let me, so do it now because it's, I mean, take action now. I'll give you the link. And, and then again, if, if it doesn't look like it, uh, you know, I'll give you your money back. But again, here are the exact dates, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, uh, the last, last Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, they're all at seven o'clock. They're all being recorded. So if you can't make it, if you're in, um, um, you know, if you're in Beijing, you can see the recordings of these things. And you'll have access not only to the recordings, but all the other launch stuff after it's launched and you won't pay anything extra. It'll be just like you paid the big money. Okay, for the Loaded Gun Founders, it's 297. That's the link, simpletradingplans.com forward slash LG, LG for Loaded Gun. Okay, simpletradingplans.com forward slash LG. I, please take advantage of it. I, I mean, simple is good. And I've been around decades, and the more complicated you make it, the more you're going to hit your head against the wall. Simple is good, but the plan of, of, of saving or keeping what, you, what you've earned in the trade, keeping your stops moving to, to fend is, is really what you should be concentrating on. Use a trigger that worked, and I've showed you one here, but that's not it. You can, you know, because you can shoot yourself in the foot, too, with a, with a loaded gun. I want to show you how to defend so that you can keep the profit that you make. Okay, that's it for me, uh, Fausto. I really, uh, as always, um, I always appreciate you having me. Um, and it's all you, baby. Thanks. And thank you, everybody, for coming.